Christ our Lord, though you are God, you became man. Make us worthy to rejoice on this feast of your glorious birth. And with Mary, your mother, and with Joseph, your chosen one, to thank, praise, and adore you, crying out with the angels, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and good hope to all. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. from our sinful hands regarding this instance. Could you do so? Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who in his love sent his only begotten Son to us and to the Son who was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem and to the Holy Spirit who fills us with joy, peace, and holiness on this feast. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Glory and thanks to you, eternal Son, you are without beginning or end. You are the hidden light who shines upon the world. You are the Ancient of Days, born as a child from the daughter of David. This day we celebrate the mystery of your love for us, proclaiming, You are wonderful, O God. You became man, yet you remain God. You are wonderful, O oh God. You came down to us and were born in a manger. Yet you fill heaven and earth with your glory. You are wonderful, O oh God. Oh, the angel shepherds and magi came to adore you. By your birth you tore down the wall, separating heavenly and earthly beings, reconciling heaven and earth. By your birth you brought together those who are far and those who are near to celebrate your feast. At your birth the angels announced to the shepherds, to you is born on this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Messiah the Lord. 
Now, O wondrous child, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to help us to understand the mystery of your incarnation. Forgive our sins, free us from all distress, and be mindful of our departed who have gone to their rest hoping in you. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. We adore you, O Son of the Father, from all eternity, and Son of the Virgin born in time. When you became flesh, our eyes were able to see God, bringing us closer to the one who dwells in the heights. With the light of your knowledge, you enlightened our minds with the knowledge of the one who is beyond our understanding. Accept our incense, forgive our sins, and grant rest to our departed. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. She hoded the lead, men bathed
has foretold my Isaiah, wonderful his name shall be. Christ is born of a virgin, as a child God is revealed. Reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in a partial in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he spoke to us through a son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of his glory, the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Or, I will be farther from him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a fiery flame. But of the Son, your throne, O God, stands forever and ever, and a righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You love justice, and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, anointed you with oil of gladness above your companions. And at the beginning, O Lord, you established the earth and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. And they will all grow like a garment. You will roll them up like a cloak and like a garment they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Shalom 
From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Great Psalms, the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen in glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The evangelist Luke writes, And in those days a decree went out from Caesar, Caesar Augustus that the entire world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And so all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and of the family of David. In order to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she brought forth her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there had been no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping night watch over their flock. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I announce to you good tidings of great joy that shall be for all the people. For this day in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you, who is Messiah and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those upon whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem, to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they left in haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. And when they saw these things, they made known the message they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting upon them within her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise In sundry times and in diverse manners, God spoke to our fathers through the prophets. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So all of existence is about communication. Now, of course, in English today, when we say communication, we think about talking. 
But communication, the very word itself, doesn't have anything to do with speech. The very word itself means the quality of coming together as one. Kum, unum, and then of course the famous TAS ending, TAS, or T in English now. Quality, communication. It has that aspect of bringing together. So this communication, community, the kum unitas, all of communi conversation, communication, is about bringing things together as one. Kum unum, and then the action of doing so, atsio, communication. So this aspect of bringing together is God. We know this from Revelation as Christians of the Trinity. The existent one, the living one, God himself is triune, Father, Word, and Spirit, this reality. There is an inner communication in the life of the divinity in all eternity that is communication, that is sharing, that is giving, that is receiving. And this aspect we don't often think about in words, but all of creation, when you read Genesis, the way that it's portrayed in poetic form, of course, but everything in creation is related to everything else. There's a very mysterious phrase where it's talked about that the plants had not come forth on the earth because the waters didn't run and these things not didn't take place because there was not yet man on the earth to take care of paradise. In other words, the land is created, it talks about bringing forth life, but the life itself doesn't come until there is man who will actually be able to adorn and to work with and to return it to God in a rational, conscious way. That all of creation, all the animals, the plants, the land itself is meant to be brought into the mystery of Adam, communicated with Adam. Adam communicating with the animals. We're told he names them. This is about the, not giving a vocabulary list about animals' names. This is about communication, of coming together, of the action of bringing together as one this reciprocity that is the act of existence. And this whole interchange between this reality that we see portrayed by the sixth day, when the portrayal of mankind communicating with God, God, as it says, walking in the garden, God is communicating personally with mankind. God is directly communicating until men decide we don't want this communication. We don't want to hear. And they break this communication and the breaking of the communication breaks not only the reciprocity of communication, it breaks the very union between the two. And so sin is about the breaking of union. It's about breaking this unity. It's like living, sin is like living in a family where the member, another member in the family just grunts at you when you see them. You speak to them and they're like, oh, yeah. and then they walk out of the room. That's sin. That is what sin is doing is I'm not interested in the voice of the living one. I'm interested in me. I'm interested in what my idea was. That is not oneness. That is navel-gazing, introspection, egoism, self-centeredness, whatever you want to call it. That is the essence of sin. It breaks the communication, which is the foundation of all living reality. And because of that, then the word itself comes among us as this child born in Bethlehem. It's about hearing because it's about living and it's about living because that is existence in communication. And so it's not by chance that in the fourth gospel, this reality that comes among us is referred to as being logos, as being word, melto, that the word comes among us, or the word dwells and overshadows us in the Syriac. So this reality is precisely where when we come to the aspect of sin, we are turning inwardly, and by it turning inwardly on ourselves and making our own decisions about how life really is meant to be, we actually cause ourselves to die because we go against the very aspect of what existence is about is to find ultimately the union with the living one, which is why he creates in the first place. The very act of giving existence is communication. The very act of giving existence is the very act of being already the oneness, because without God, of course, we wouldn't exist. And our existence would not continue. And so when we gather around on the birth in Bethlehem, there is an aspect of this word incarnate, which is to bring back to us the life of God and the life that is all of creation, to be brought together into this unity. 
When we think about words, now we forget about grunting. Grunting and walking out of the room is not a word. It's not a communication. It's certainly not even a word. But words are these very mysterious things that bring together people, or also break people apart. When you think about this, the words, the words that you hear now, is trying to communicate something from here, from here, to you, that we have the ability to move airwaves and make sounds and make innumerable types of sounds with all the thousands of languages there are around the world. And yet it's still the fundamental exact same reality of communicating of what is interior to the person to be communicated to the interior to another person. Which is why conversation is actually a skill that we have to learn. Talking, well, we do that. Babies babble, we just mim mimic sounds and we make noise and we talk and we talk and we talk. But communication is the aspect of being able to receive and then in reciprocity to give back. Conversation is a skill. It's something that we have to learn. And the breaking in Adam, of Adam and Eve and the breaking in the original sin is this desire that we will not listen and we break the conversation between God and man and in doing so, we die because we break the very chain that communicates for us. Among the angels and men, of course, we are intelligent beings. So we have the ability to interact with the living one, with God, in a way which is completely unique amongst all of creation. The trees, the bunny rabbits, they just do what they do by their nature. And by doing that, they reflect God's glory. But they do not have a conscious reciprocity between the creator and themselves. We have that. And because it's conscious, it also means we have the ability to grunt and walk out of the room and to ignore that reality within our lives. That is the very meaning behind the incarnation, is that God himself becomes man so that there will be the model and the exemplar of what the reality of God and man is meant to be. And we enter into that mystery. So as an application for us these days, because of course we know with the holidays here, there will be lots of words being thrown all over the place continually. Sometimes a little less soberly, sometimes a little more soberly. And over those years will be the famous uncle who will come in and say something dumb, right? It's always the poor uncle who always gets labeled as the party ruiner. I don't know why. You never talk about the aunt coming in and talking about stupid things. But in any case, it's important for us to remember this great gift of speech that we have, that words have the ability to confer life, and that words have the ability to confer death, to impose death. Not just because it breaks up a conversation, but because the word is reflected in our words to the degree that we receive from God and have the ability and virtue to be encouraging, to be solicitous towards what is virtuous and what is good, to aid one another. And so it's a funny thing to think about, but I would just leave you on Christmas Day that we should make an examination of how do we converse? Do we actually hear what is being said? And do we communicate back actually to what has been said other than the common behavior that we all know, which is just waiting for the other person to shut up so that I can say what I want to say. But that's not a conversation because we're actually not listening to what is being said. And while I'm not actually talking about social manners, I'm just talking about the fact that that is an exemplification in human life of the underlying reality of sin, that we lead our lives in such a way that we do not hear what is being said to us at grace at every moment. God is always communicating to us. The same way that in every loving family, people are always communicating, even when you're not talking. When you think about the fact that just being together is a communication also, and it's about life. I've told you about the one couple that I knew when I was first married. They were in their 90s. They had married in a farm village in Kansas or somewhere around there. And when he was 18, she was 17. They had married over 70 years by the time I had met them. 
They talked very rarely, but were completely united. They were a beautiful, existential thing to see because they had melded together in communication and life so profoundly, so beautifully, that words themselves no longer, no longer expressed the greater depth of the living reality that they had become. And that is an example of the life of grace, in which we live continually in this presence of the communication of God. And so when we do the examination of ourselves, of how we converse or don't converse well, we're actually deep down learning what response to God's grace actually means, which is why God's reparation, and in the Eastern churches, it is the incarnation that saves us. And the emphasis is put much more on this fact of God becoming man. And that reality, that foundation, because it's a question of union, it's not the question of paying back a price. That comes up, of course, redemptive aspect. But the main thing is about the union. You pay a price and you repair what has to be done and reparation and redemption because the goal is not reparation and redemption. The goal is union with the living and the loving one. That broken communication that we have to refine, reseal, and return to. And so as you kneel before the crib these days now, as we begin the 12 days of Christmas, as you kneel before the crib, it's to ask the question, how does my spirit hear? How do I listen? And I can look at my behavior in my life of how I don't communicate or listen well with those around me and actually have a great lesson given to me in that examination of how much I do not listen to God. Because if I can't listen to the human being that I see in front of me, then what about the infinite transcendent one that I don't see, that is not sitting in front of me in any tangible way? And so we learn actually by learning to communicate here in this world, which is all interrelated, we actually learn to hear the voice of the one who walked in the garden. And that voice is the one who is born to us in the flesh through the womb of Mary in Bethlehem. May the Lord God give us this docility, this ability to listen, and most importantly, in listening, to be able to respond to grace. Merry Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things for me, for our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and he came in. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and His Son, who with the Father and His Son is adored and glorified, <coughs> spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We, we confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Tell what Madame Hey Galaho, Alvanta Lo, Hodam Hade Tayut, Wayne and Silver Tanimota, Kayulal by Tokwes Kudem, Hoye Flo, Hod Hood Shohan.
Almighty Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, St. Mary, and St. Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. John Chrysostom on page 876, 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Peace, peace love, and faith, brothers and sisters, from God the Father, O oh Lord, on high, hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, and you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom, through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you are adored by all angels, 
angels bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you, with purity and holiness. May we offer you an acceptable sacrifice, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly it is right and just to think, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our thanks. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices and sweet melodies, proclaiming... Truly he is the son of your most majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine, he was born of a woman's womb, that we may be born again of a spiritual womb. He became our brother so that through his grace when we become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only son. Kurie eleison. Wabi almo haudam ha shodi lema bed haye. En sabe lahma mida kori shanto o bare hu kodesh. Waksu ya bin talmida koro mara. Saba hula mele kulhun. Ho no denita. Fahro diel, dahlo faikun, wahlo sagiem, meta kaseo metiheb, usoyo, haume wa hoye dan kailam alamin. Dum sich woman, Hamro, men, Mahayo. Bare Hukadesh. We are men, Talmi, Dal, Karo, Mara. Sabish Tawa, Mene, Kulho. Ho no, Denita. Demo, Dila, Dia, Tiki, Hadato. Dachlo faikun, wachlo sagiem, mete shadu metihem, usoyon, chaume wa chaume dan kailam alamin. in memory of me. Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord, and we profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sin. Oh, word of God who can comprehend.
again that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory. Who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin? Who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured? Who can praise your plan of salvation for us? We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that this sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness, as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we sanctify 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 you, we have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Manin Maria, Manin Maria, Manin Maria, Nite Marachochail Kadisho. On the hand, the line of Al Corbono, oh no. Give me the body of Christ our God, be for us a pledge of the life to come. A body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood for us that gives new life, we receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, Grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully with justice and holiness, may they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. 
we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and distressed, for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Saint John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious Saint Stephen the Archdeacon and Martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, Grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones, and to those who have done your will, that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. of your eternity and he accomplished his plan of salvation for us that we may come to you may we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples the saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo elukul chudna. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him and receive the blessing of the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility, and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins, and for new life, O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
given to you for the grace again and again we thank you O Lord and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink O lover of all people have mercy on us Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these, your gifts and graces, and for your goodness? As you have called upon us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. And we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el
O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishments and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.